Windows 10 represents a huge paradigm shift for a company like Microsoft. It's turned around its business strategy from pushing its number one product as a, in terms of revenue as a paid upgrade that users have to buy to something that's going to be freely offered to get everyone on the same platform. Now, of course, those of us who are used to using Linux distributions, we're used to this kind of free upgrading all the time. Don't get free as in free and open source confused. But as I start to use Windows 10, I can't help but feel there are a few features, especially in the UI, that they kind of borrow from each other that I've seen in Linux distributions and now I'm seeing it in Windows 10 and I mean I'm happy to say that I'm happy to see it. So in this video we're going to be delving a little bit deeper into the UI of Windows 10 and having a look at how some of those UI elements may have originated elsewhere. What's going on Internet? IG here again today. We're going to bust right into this by having a look at some of the UI elements digging a little bit deeper into what the user interface and user experience is compared to my experience as a Linux user. So let's get into it. All right, so this is a pretty standard Windows 10 desktop. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna notice about Windows 10 as the, as the overall UI is the task panel along the bottom. It doesn't look that different from, uh, from most of the other Windows 10 iterations that we've seen, but I think this is what really struck me the first time around. I unlocked it, whacked it up against the side, hit that start menu, Tell me that doesn't look like an Ubuntu Dash. Um, this was actually the very first mode that I used Windows 10 in because I did it by accident. I was like, you know what? That looks really a lot like Unity. Um, and I guess throughout the Windows 10 UI, you can see sort of modern design elements uh, trending throughout the, uh, the user interface. Everything is a lot flatter now. Everything is a lot more geometric. Uh, it's all about bright colors and flat layers uh, compared to the Windows 7 era where everything was shiny and glossy and three-dimensional. So it's just interesting to see. And we, of course, we've seen that sort of design language trending throughout, um, you know, throughout iOS, throughout uh, Ubuntu, throughout uh, GNOME 3 and GNOME Shell, and obviously KDE Plasma Desktop 5 as well. Um, and to be honest, that's when you look at a lot of these design elements like the calendar, for example, um, you'll notice that a lot of them are very flat, translucent, transparent, and, uh, and I immediately thought of uh, Plasma 5 when looking at the overall theming of, uh, of Windows 10. So it's interesting to see that when it comes to design, uh, the open source world has definitely got a good handle on what's popular when it, I guess copying is the best form of flattery when it comes to overall UI design. When it comes to the old desktop apps or the older style of Win32 apps, um, I'm actually pleased to say that, the, that they've actually finally revised a lot of what the Win32 theming looks like. Essentially, in my opinion, it was relatively unchanged from uh, from Windows, uh, Windows Vista, Windows 7, and Windows 8. All had very similar styling when it came to the Win32 apps, the standard desktop programs. Uh, obviously, they did have their newer design language when it came to uh, some of their newer apps, like, uh, I, I don't know, like the Groove Music app, for example, that looks a lot flatter and it looks a lot, um, you know, big touch-friendly buttons. But when it came to the Win32 stuff, it was mostly left unchanged for quite some time. Whereas nowadays, we get a bit of a theme refresh. Again, everything's a lot squarer, tighter, more geometric, more flat. Um, and obviously you've got the ribbon interface along a lot of the Win32 apps there as well, which is good to see from a consistency point of view. Um, and I guess, I think what a lot of the modern apps or a lot of what the, the modern style of applications are, are trying to achieve now is uh, very similar to, I guess, what a lot of uh, Gnome Shell and, uh, and what the Gnome project has been doing. And let's be honest, we all use apps nowadays and we're all pretty familiar with how they work and how they feel. Um, but I guess overall, I'm glad to see that the apps now uh, allow you to run them in windowed mode, which makes so much more sense on a laptop. Now, let's talk about the start menu itself. There's not a whole lot going on here that we kind of haven't already seen before. The most used programs are a fairly sort of expected feature in, in any kind of start menu. And it's one that we'll often see in other user interfaces as well. Obviously, the live tiles is something that Windows has going for it. It's kind of the one modern innovation that, that I think has really stuck and, uh, and people really appreciate when it's executed well uh, from the apps point of view. You can see you know, the money and the news app and the photos app, all of these apps all have glanceable information and that's fantastic. 
I think their integration into the start menu is a good idea. You can still pick them up and move them around as you so desire. And more importantly, this start menu is customizable. You're not stuck with, uh, with just how this looks straight out of the box here. So let's have a poke around in the settings there for, uh, for what this actually looks like. So if we go to personalization and go to the start, you can see here you've got a couple options here. You can show the most used apps, show recently used apps, and you can show jump lists on the taskbar. You can also choose what folders appear on the, uh, on the start menu so that uh, yeah, you can limit this list here. I'm fairly certain you can also customize the overall size of the start menu. So if you just want a tiny little start menu, I think you can pull it all the way across and remove all the live tiles. I think I've seen that done before or if you want all your live tiles being displayed, then you can expand that sucker right out. Or you can even, if you are a fan of the full Windows start screen, you can uh, even run the start full screen, as you can see here. So you got a few options there, but I'm just glad that they give you the option now. More options is always good. Finally, let's talk about the Action Center, because I think this is, again, something that we've, we can appreciate from, uh, from other desktops, like Plasma Desktop and also uh, and GNOME Shell to an extent as well, GNOME 3. Um, so again, you've got a great stacking notification system and that you can also reply in line to emails and Facebook messages and stuff like that. And I wish replying in line would become something that is kind of rolled out on all the other desktops uh, universally. That'd be great to see. Uh, and also quick toggles. I actually really like this idea. It'd be great if uh, quick toggles could become something that is uh, yeah, that is implemented on you know Plasma Desktop, GNOME Shell, and it might already be. You guys could let me know about that in the comments below. But when it comes to the overall user interface, that's kind of it. I mean, we do have the tablet interface, which, I mean, I don't know, tablet modes, meh. It's, it's never really been something that I've been terribly fussed about. Obviously, it makes sense if you're using a tablet, and I'll have to use it on a tablet for a while just to kind of see how that goes. But, I mean, right now, I mean, KDE have had a tablet interface for a little while that they've played around with their search and launch one uh, and that makes sense on, on a touch screen as well and I'd be kind of curious to give that a go on a touch screen in comparison um, but I guess it operates much this this particular interface operates much in the way that uh, that the Windows 8 um, desktop did but also they've added a task panel down on the bottom here that looks a lot like Android tablets mode so they're kind of borrowing the best from a lot of different uh, user interface ideas and concepts um, which, you know, in my opinion, not a bad idea at all. So really you can tell that Windows 10 was built on the back of uh, a lot of customer feedback from those early testing days. And I think that we can all enjoy the results uh, as, a, as a response to that. Overall, I'm very impressed. And I guess as these videos roll on, we'll get to see what other features are available for the Windows 10 desktop. So the question of the day is, what are some of the user experience or user interface elements that you really appreciate about Windows 10? Obviously the Windows 8.1, Windows 8 sort of dual user interface wasn't the most user friendly and I uh, got bagged out and I think a lot of people may have tried Linux as an alternative because of it. Well nowadays that kind of, that, oh, that obstacle is sort of fixed. So what do you guys think? What do you guys like about it and what do you guys wish could improve? And while you're at it, may as well tell me your favorite Linux UI feature in the, in the comment section below as well. That'll be all from me guys. And the next time we're going to be looking at first party apps that come pre-installed on Windows 10. Uh, until then, I will see you guys all in the next one. You can follow me on Twitter if you want to keep up with, other my, uh, with uh, some of my other ramblings. I will see you guys in the next video. Like it if you appreciate the video. Subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff in your inbox coming soon. I'll see you then.